Let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, we well, thank you for this day. Thank you, Lord, because we we'll see a youth here. We we'll see a young man here. We we'll see somebody like a child here. Raising the name of the family beyond the place, Jesse the Father had lifted that name. And Lord, we pray today that all our young people all over this nation, all our young people who know the Lord and love the Lord, I pray, Lord, today the spirit of the conqueror will come upon them in Jesus' name. And Lord, the exploits we adults have not been able to do, and the places we have not been able to reach in your power by your spirit, our children will reach in a place in Jesus' name. Do something today from heaven. That will have a mark here on earth. That all our young brothers and sisters, our sons and our daughters, our children, boys and girls, and with our parents too. I pray, Lord, today will go a great giant step further in Jesus' name. Lay your hand upon everyone. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. God bless everyone. You can see that we're looking at 1 Samuel chapter 17. I believe in verse 33. 1 Samuel chapter 17 verse 33. And Saul said unto David, Thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him. For thou art but a youth. Underline that word. Thou art but a youth. And he, a man of war from his youth. Mark that word. A man of war from his youth. Verse 42. In verse 42, And when the Philistines looked about, and saw David, he disdained him, for he was but a youth. Underline the word again. That's the word we're pursuing today. He was but a youth and ruddy and of a fair countenance. We're looking at verse 55. In verse 55, and when so saw David go forth against the Philistine, he said unto Abner, the captain of the host, Abner, whose son is this youth? That's the word again, the youth. Whose son is this youth? And Abner said, As thy soul liveth, O king, I cannot tell. Verse 58. And Saul said unto him, Whose son art thou, thou young man? Youth, young man, the same thing. Whose son art thou, young man, on the land that? And David answered, I am the son of thy servant, Jesse, the Bethlehemite. The Bethlehemite. Now you see that uh, David did great exploits. Today I'm talking to the church on great exploits through unexpected youths. Great exploits through unexpected youths. David was extraordinary. David was exemplary. And David was excelling in his youth. Why? Because he had some qualities. And as we read through the story of David all over the Bible, because the name David appears 895 times in the Bible. Think about that. That from the time the name of David began, in 1 Samuel, or maybe in Ruth. Now, it goes on and on, even until the book of Revelation, that that name appears 895 times in the Bible, 841 times in the Old Testament, and 54 times in the New Testament. And as we put everything together, gather everything together, here is what to observe. Number one, his conversion. His conversion. That man knew about conversion. That man tasted conversion. That man knew the Lord. His sins were forgiven. He was converted. Number two, we'll see his courage. The one that could face the lion and face the bear and face Goliath and face a national enemy. He had courage. Number three, he had consecration. 
he put his life in his hand. And he said, because this man, the Philistine, had defied the name of the Almighty God, I'm going to go against him. He counted no price too high to pay. He was the one that later said in life, I will not offer anything to God that cost me nothing. Consecration. He had confidence in God. He had confidence in God. That same God that helped me, and I brought down that lion and that bear, this Philistine will be like one of them. If you have confidence in God, has faith in God, you will do anything, everything God has appointed you to do in this life, in Jesus' name. He had commitment in whatever he did commitment in whatever he did. Whatsoever thy hand findeth to thee, do it with all thy strength, all thy might. And that's what we learn about David. He was in the field taking care of animals. He had confidence in God and he had commitment in whatever he did. And he was on the battlefield, of course, he had commitment unto the Lord and unto the work that he had given him to do. And he had a conscience. He had a conscience. You see, in life, if you're going to do something spectacular for the Lord, you must have a conscience, a tender conscience. Do you remember? Saul was after him. And then there was a chance to kill Saul. And somebody said, just one go, just one striking. And a man is gone. He said, no, I will not do that. I will not lay my hand on the anointed of the Lord. That's conscience. And then he caught a little bit of his garment. And then he went afar. So just to show Saul, my, my Lord, the king, I have been there. See the tip of your, of your garment and see your bolster and see the bottle of water. And his conscience smote him. His conscience smote him because of that little thing he had done. That man had conscience. That man had character. He had character. That's the one that said in Psalm 15, who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord, who will stand in your holy place. And then he began to talk about character. In Psalm 24, he talks about clean hands and a pure heart. Anybody like that, that has number one conversion, Anybody like that, that has courage to go through life. Number three, anybody like that, that has consecration. Anybody like that, number four, having confidence in God. Number five, having commitment in whatever he does, whether small or great, whether in the public or in the private. Anybody that has conscience, anybody that has character, that person will make it in life. And I was like, young people are going up. You need to set some of these models before you and say, that's what David had going for him. That's what David had going for him. If he could be like that, I will be like that. I said, I will be like that. I thought uh, the youth will say it and I will hear them from over here. God bless you. You are going to be like that in Jesus' name. We're looking at First John chapter 2. First John chapter 2. And I'm reading from verse 13 and verse 14. First John chapter 2 verse 13. I have written unto you fathers because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I write unto you young men, youths, young brothers and young sisters. I write unto you young men because ye have overcome the wicked one. David overcame. I will overcome. You will overcome in Jesus' name. Look at verse 14. In verse 14, it says, I have written unto you fathers because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you young men because ye are strong. Ye are strong. Don't ever say you are not so like the weak say. I am strong because ye are strong and the word of God abideth in you and ye have overcome the wicked one. There are three things we are considering today in this message. Great exploits through unexpected use. Number one, the impact of a young man in the kingdom. The impact of a young man in the kingdom. Number two now is the impute of young maidens. The impute of young maidens. Those are the daughters in the kingdom. As the boys excelled, so the girls also excelled. And as our young men are excelling today, so our young daughters will excel in Jesus' name. And number three, the influence of young ministers 
in the kingdom. The influence of young ministers in the kingdom. We're coming to number one. Young people, tell me number one. You got it. You'll always get it. The impact of a young man in the kingdom. We're coming to 1 Samuel chapter 17. 1 Samuel chapter 17. I'm reading from verse 42. 1 Samuel chapter, chapter 17 verse 42. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him. Don't mind their language against you. All the same, whatever they say, and whatever criticism, even if they look down on you, the person they're looking down on will come to the top. And this did him, for he was but a youth, and ruddy, and of a fair countenance. And the Philistines said unto David, Am I a dog that thou comest to me with staves? And, and, and the Philistines cursed him, by, their, by his gods. You know, these are the days when there are Philistines uh, around the corner, they are occultism, they are in terrible gangs, and there are this and that, and they have their incantations, and they might uh, curse any of the people here, but their causes are neutralized already. They will not take effect upon your life in Jesus' name. And, and in verse 44, and the Philistines said unto David, Come to me, and I will give thy flesh unto the, unto the fowls of the air and to the beasts of the field. Not just empty talk and empty barrels make the most sound. This one will not affect David. This one will not affect me. I said this one will not affect me. It's only the bragging of an empty person. The Spirit of God will not back up what they say against you. And the power of God will not back up what they say against you. You'll still be victorious in Jesus' name. Then David said, then said David, listen, say something. Don't just stay there. Let the promise of God come out of you. Let your confidence come out straight when you stand before the enemy and when you stand before the people that are trying to put you down and the people that try to set a barricade, a barrier before you that you'll not get to where you're going. Don't just keep quiet there. Say something and something will come out of your mouth. And whatever you say will be confirmed from heaven in Jesus' name. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come. Somebody there, I come. I said, I come. Keep on moving. Keep on moving. Don't move away from the challenge. And don't move away from the difficulty. You see that assignment in front of you. You know, it's mathematics, it's chemistry, it's geography, or it is history, it's journalism, or whatever it is. Don't say, that thing is too tough. Come on. Now get up and say, I come. I come to the class today, and I'm going to make something. I said, I come to the class today, I'm going to make something. I come to the field today, I'm going to make something. I come to the battlefield today, I'm going to do something. Keep on moving. Come is a verb. I come, I come. And it's a word of action. You're not, you know, sitting back. I have headache, headache will not hinder me. I have stomach problems. Stomach problem will not hinder me when I come and I say I come. I even forget the headache. I forget all those things because I address myself to the assignment and have. And when you rise up every morning and you say I come, when you enter the class, when you enter the school, they know that the champion has come. The one, the giant killer has come. The one that will master every subject, every assignment, he has come. And he says, I come. The church, can you shout for me, I come? I come. You will get there. And then it says, thou comest to me with a sword and with a stave and with a shield. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts. You know, as you're entering the exam class and, you know, people are dropping their heads. They say they never make it. You know, this is a difficult thing. They said the result of last year, you know, all this percentage failed and that percentage failed. And then you're coming and you have your notebook or whatever. And then you enter there to the exam hall. You say, thank you. Jesus, I come. I said, I come. You know, any, anywhere you go, you go there with confidence. And you go there with authority. And you go there with the assurance because your victory is already written down in heaven. And then you are just getting there to confirm it. It's confirmed in your life in Jesus' name. 
And then you say, come in the name of the Lord, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. This day, when is your victory? Yeah. This day, when are you going to defeat this Goliath? Yeah. You know, if you're running every time, running every time. See, last year is gone. The other year is gone. A whole decade is gone. There must be a day in your life when you say, victory must start today. Somebody there said, victory must start today. It says, this day, this day, when the Lord delivered thee into my hand, and I will smite thee, and they take thine head. The man did not even have a sword, but he said, I'm going to do it all the same. I don't have this. Don't count on what you don't have. Count on what you have. I said, count on what you have. You have something. Somebody there, I have something. I will smite thee and take thine head from thee. And I will give thy car the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth that all the earth may know. That's the purpose. That all the earth may know. That's the goal. That all the earth may know. That's the reason. That all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And then he goes on, and they were told in that place, in verse 47, and all this assembly shall know, all this assembly shall know, will hear your testimony. Yeah. All this assembly shall know. As everybody now will know the name of David. I'm talking to somebody there, I will know your name. Yeah. This congregation will know your name. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with the sword and spear for the earth for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. And it came to pass, it will come to pass. And it came to pass, I said it will come to pass. And it came to pass, it will come to pass in your life. When the Philistine arose and came and drew near to meet David, that David hasted and ran. And ran away. And ran back to his family. I ran back to mommy, ran back to daddy, tell me, run towards the army to meet the Philistines. Don't run away from problems. That's what weakens us. You find a problem there, then you retreat, then you run back, you'll be weakened. Every time you try to avoid a problem, every time you try to avoid a difficulty, every time you try to avoid a challenge, it will become bigger in your sight and in your mind. And if you start running from problems, you'll keep on running till the end of your life. But if you stop and you say, look at the enemy, and look at the challenge, and look at the scene, and you look at them eyeball to eyeball, you know, when you put your head down, you don't want to look at the challenge. The enemy can size you up. And the enemy will recognize, uh -huh, they're afraid. You know, they say when those uh, people have this kind of face, they say they're witches or wizards. And then you put on your head, they catch you. They will not catch you timid again. They will not catch you a coward anymore. What do you do? You look at them and you say, hey, you're coming. I come to you, I come to you, and I come in the name of the Lord. I come in the power of the Spirit of God. Already you have started overcoming. And you will overcome in Jesus' name. Young people, this is how we get victory in life. You run towards the enemy. And it says, and you run toward the army to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand uh, into his bag and he took the incense stone and he slung it and smote the Philistine. You'll smite them yeah. in his forehead that the stone sunk, sank into his forehead and he fell upon his face to the earth. They will fall. Yeah. Every good light will fall before you. Yeah. Every challenge will fall before you. So David prevailed. This is your day today you prevail. Over the Philistine with a sling and a stone and smote the Philistine and slew him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. He used his own sword to destroy him. It says in verse 52, And the men of Israel and the men of Judah arose and shouted, 
the courage of David instilled courage into the hearts of the other people. Courage is contagious. Faith is contagious. When you are able to stand up and you prevail against the collab, it will spread. Your courage will affect other people. And he shouted and pursued the Philistines until, it says, they uh, pursued them until they come to the valley and to the gates of Ekron. And they wounded the Philistines and the Philistines uh, fled uh, and they fell down by the way to Sharaim. And so you find there that, uh, you know, these uh, people, uh, all the children of Israel, now they had courage because of what? David had done. I told you already the qualities of the life of David. But we don't know too much. Many people don't know too much about David. Do you know that, number one, David was a king. David was a king. I'm looking at uh, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 13. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 13. And I'm reading here from verse 22. Acts chapter 13, verse 22. It says, and when he had, uh, he had removed him, the sword, he raised up unto them David to be their king. He raised up David to be their king. Mark that down. Because you see, uh, David was not just a one talent man. And David was not just a one job man. And David was not just an expert in only one thing. Number one, he was a king. You know, there are some young people. I I'm so busy. I'm doing this. I cannot do that. Uh -uh, this is your chance. You're doing this, take on that other thing. You're doing that, take on another thing. And you'll succeed in everything you do in Jesus' name. He was a king, but David was also a prophet. Look at Acts of the Apostles chapter 2. Acts of the Apostles chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 29. Acts of the Apostles chapter 2. We're reading from verse 29. It says, And the men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his sepulchre is with us. Until this day, listen to this now. Therefore, being the prophet and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his loins according to the flesh he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. Then he goes on. The point is in verse 30, therefore being a prophet. You see David was unique. There are not too many prophets or there are not too many kings in the land of Israel that are prophets at the same time. And not many prophets that were kings at the same time. But he singled himself out. He was king and also he was prophet. In fact, the Lord called him my servant. My servant. We're looking at Second Samuel chapter 7. Second Samuel chapter 7. You know, they, they tell us that, uh, you know, uh, Jack of all trade and master of none. I'm talking about David, Jack of all trade and master of everything. You will master everything you do. You will excel in everything you do. You, if you take all those things they say in the world, Jack of all trade and master of none, there's, they're trying to limit you. They're trying to say, stay on this, stay on this, stay on this alone. Maybe there are some people, that's the only thing they can do. Maybe there are some people, that's the only line they can follow. I'm talking about a man who was a king. I'm talking about a man who was a prophet. I'm talking about a man who was also the servant of the Lord. I'm looking at Second Samuel chapter 7. 2 Samuel chapter 7, and I'm reading from verse 8. It says, Now therefore so shalt thou say unto my servant David. Thou shalt that, thou shalt thou say unto my servant David. He was not only a king, he was not only a prophet, he was not only the servant of the Lord. David was a warrior. David was also a warrior. We're looking at 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 25. In 1 Samuel chapter 25, we're looking at verse 23. In verse 23, And when Abigail saw David, she hasted, and she lighted off the ass, and fell before David on her face, and bowed herself to the ground. Look at verse 28. It says, I pray thee, forgive her. Uh, the trespass of thine handmaid, for the Lord will certainly make my Lord a sure house. I thought somebody would say amen. 
Because my Lord fighteth the battles of the Lord, and evil has not been found in thee all thy days. It says, because my, my Lord fighteth the battles of the Lord. He was a warrior. Not only that, he was a shepherd. We're looking at uh, Psalm 78. Psalm 78, as we're reading all this, what are you going to be in your life? What are you going to do in your life? Are you going to just say, well, I cannot do much. I'm doing this. You know, sometimes there are people that say, I don't have time. I don't have time. I'm a father. So was David. I'm a teacher. So was David. And then I'm doing this. So was David. And then I cannot walk in the church. I cannot do this. I cannot do that. Of course you can. And you will in Jesus' name. And you must, and you must, because there lies the victory in your life. When you're able to say, Lord, here am I. I'm doing this, I'll do that. I'm doing this, I'll do that. And God will give you the wisdom as he gave this young man, David, the wisdom to get everything. We're looking at Psalm 78. I'm reading from verse 17. Psalm 78, verse 17. He chose David also, his servant, and took him from the sheepfolds, from following the youths great with young. And he brought him to feed Jacob, his people, and Israel, his inheritance. So he fed them, that is, David fed the children of Israel, according to the integrity of his heart, and guided them them by the skillfulness of his hands. He was a shepherd too. Do you know that David was a soul winner? Of course he was. He was teaching sinners how to get saved, how to be born again, how to be converted. He was also a soul winner. Don't tell me that, you know, I'm uh, doing this so I cannot do that. I'm doing this so I cannot do that. I'm still young. I'm following education. I'm reading. What are you reading? You're reading this and reading that. How many hours of the day? You can still work for the Lord and be a soul winner and all those classmates of yours you tell them Jesus saves and through you many students will be saved and they'll come to the Lord in Jesus name I'm looking at Psalm 51 Psalm 51 we're looking at here from verse 6 it says behold that desires truth in the inward parts and in the hidden parts thou shalt make me to know wisdom he'll give you wisdom Everything you need to do in your life, wisdom in Jesus' name. Everywhere you need to go and every job you need to do and every place you need to climb, all the wisdom and the, uh, the strength to do it, the Lord will give you in Jesus' name. Punch me with Esau and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me. Tell me. That man was saved. All of you so be saved in Jesus' name. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. Everybody, we're going to read verse 13 together. One, two, three, go. That man was a soul winner. You'll be a soul winner. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Do you know that uh, David was a writer? He was an author, and David was a poet. Look at uh, Second Chronicles chapter 35. David was a writer, a poet. We're looking at uh, for Second Chronicles chapter 35, and I'm reading from verse 4. Of course, you can write. You know, you may start by writing, uh, you know, short uh, poems. You may start by writing short articles, and there may be a school magazine. Don't say, I'm not interested. I'm doing a science subject. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. Be a writer and put your thoughts on paper and learn the basic principles of what it means to write, how to communicate, how to put your ideas across, how to influence the, the school. First of all, your class, and then your school, and then your local community with words. Words, because your pen can be mightier than the sword of the army. And so, if you learn how to write like David, what a great thing that will make 
for you in life. We're looking at uh, Second Chronicles chapter 34. I'm reading chapter 35. I'm reading from verse 4. It says, uh, prepare yourselves by the houses of your fathers after your causes according to the writing of David, according to the writing of David, king of Israel, and according to the writing of Solomon, his son, and you'll find a lot of psalms and poetic form that David wrote, that he penned. It, not only that, David was a composer as well as a singer. A composer as well as a singer. We're looking at uh, Second Samuel chapter 23. Second Samuel chapter 23. It's not just that he defeated Goliath. He also defeated the weakness in him. He also defeated all the kind of retarding retardation within him that will say, I cannot do this, I cannot do that. I'm too busy fighting in the battle of the Lord. I cannot compose song. I cannot be a singer. He was everything. And I'm saying that if God has given you five talents, all those five talents you will use for the kingdom of God. If God has given you talents and gifts and all those things that he put inside you, all those things are going to come out. And you're going to excel in this life in Jesus' name. In 2 Samuel chapter 23, I'm reading from verses 1 and 2. 2 Samuel chapter 23. And we're reading from verses 1 and 2. It says, Now these be the last words of David. David, the son of Jesse, a sage, and the man who, and who was raised up on high, anointed of God, of the God of Jacob, and the sweet psalmist of Israel. And the sweet psalmist of Israel said, The Spirit of the Lord spake by me, and his word was in my tongue. Uh, look, look at something here. Maybe you don't, uh, you've never read this in Amos chapter 6. Amos chapter 6, and this is something that you need to know about uh, David uh, concerning the music ministry and concerning the singing ministry. And see what uh, David did. He didn't say, well, I'm a king. I cannot uh, be a singer. Uh, there are people that uh, they have the talent and they have uh, the way with that. They could sing, but you know, you know, they said, I'm not a mother. And therefore, how can I be singing? I'm now a daddy. How can I be singing? How can I be in the same choir? My son is there. My daughter is there. And I'm there. To, you know, David did not think like that. He just thought, all I'm going to do is to praise the Lord. All I'm trying to do is to glorify the Lord. My son is there. Wonderful. We'll sing together. My son is, uh, is there. My daughter is there. Wonderful. The three of us will sing together and make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Don't abandon your calling and don't abandon what the Lord has given you to do just because now you're a mother or you're a father and our young people should those musical talents. Bring everything out and the Lord will use you for his glory in the kingdom in Jesus' name. Amos chapter 6. Amos chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 5. Amos chapter 6, and I'm reading from verse 5. Are you all there? Okay, convince me you are there. Read it. One, two, three, go. You see, look at this. It says, it says the chant to the sound of the viol, that's violin. And then it says, and invent to themselves instruments of music. Tell me the rest. Like David. David, not only that he sang, he invented instruments of music. The, mu the musical instruments that were not there before. He said, there's a sound, there's a kind of sound that ought to come out. There's a kind of melody that ought to come out. There's a kind of harmony that ought to come out. And I'm not hearing that. I'm not seeing that. And because you couldn't find that to buy in the market, he invented instruments of music. You see that man, he had time to do that. People say, I'm having too much to do. I cannot do this. I cannot do that. Of course you can. I said, of course you can. The Lord will help you. will open your eyes. And your life will be broad. And your life will be stretched. And you will do a lot in this generation. In Jesus' name. He was a composer. He was a singer. And then he was a faithful 
endure of the will of God. Look at all this. Look at all this. This man, he loved the Lord. He exalted the Lord. And he said, I do this, I do this, I do this. But I'm going to do the will of God as well. We're looking at Acts of the Apostles chapter 13. And here in verse 22, he said, And when he had removed him, he removed Saul, he raised up unto them David. Then he says, to be their king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. You'll be like that. Which shall fulfill all my will. Which shall fulfill all my will. We're talking about David. He had an impact as a young man in the kingdom. And he was the greatest king of the children of Israel in all through their generations. As long as they had royalty in their line. David, he was a king. David, he was a prophet. David, he was a servant of the Lord. David, he was a warrior. David, he was a shepherd. David, he was a soul winner. David, he was a writer and a poet. And David, he was a composer and a, and a singer. He was also the inventor of musical instruments. And then David, he was a doer of God's will. Number 10, he was a citizen of heaven. And now a citizen of heaven forever. Citizen of heaven forever. He started here on earth and now he is in heaven. I said he's now in heaven. You'll be there too. Where are you? You'll be there too. I will be there. Isaiah chapter 55. Isaiah chapter 55. He got to heaven at last. Young people, young people, you'll get there at last. Daddy will see you in heaven. Mommy will see you in heaven. That means daddy and mommy will be there. Don't worry, whatever might be happening at home now, all that the Lord will cleanse. All that the Lord will reshape on. All that the Lord will correct and rectify. And daddy, mommy, father, father and mother, and son and daughter will all be in heaven in Jesus' name. I'm looking at Isaiah chapter 55, and we're looking at verse 3. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 3. Incline your ear and come unto me here and your soul shall live and i will make an everlasting covenant with you even the sure mercies of david everlasting covenant with you even the sure mercies of david now as god used a young man we can talk about other young men as god used a young man in those days he also used young women also use young daughters. That's what brings us to point number two, the impute of young maidens in the kingdom. The impute of young maidens in the kingdom. We're looking at 2 Kings chapter 5. 2 Kings chapter 5. As uh, the Lord is just seeing our young brothers abusing our young sisters in Jesus' name. As the Spirit of the Lord is upon, uh, the, uh, upon uh, our youths who are brothers, it will be upon our youths who are daughters in Jesus' name. I was uh, wanting to hear the melodious amen of those daughters there. In uh, Second Kings, Second Kings chapter five, I'm reading from verse one. Second Kings chapter five, we're looking at verse one. Now Naaman, captain of the host of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master, and honourable because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. He was also a mighty man of valor, but, but. But it was a leper, and the Syrians had gone out by companies and had uh, brought away captive out of the land of, uh, of Israel a little maid, a little girl, a little daughter, a female, a younger person, and she waited on Naaman's wife. And she said, this little maid, and she said, this observant girl, and she said, this tender girl, and she said, and this converted, saved, and steadfast girl, and she said unto her mistress, would God, my Lord, were with the prophet that is in Samaria. 
for he would recover him of his leprosy. See what this girl is saying. And understand, this little lady and this little maid had been violently separated from her parents, violently separated from her home, violently separated from her friends and from her country. And yet she kept the faith. And yet she was not bitter. And yet she was not angry. The grace of God was in her. That's what you call salvation. That's what you call conversion. With all that they had done. And yet, and she was very observant. And, and then she kept her faith about she still knew about her God and knew what her God. God will do. Not because, okay, if that God is still there, why did they carry me to captivity? If that God is still there, why am I suffering this? He said, God sent me here for a purpose. Look at my master and look at my Lord here. He is a leper. God sent me here to be a witness. Anywhere you go, my daughter there, God sends you to be a witness. And you'll be a witness in Jesus' name. She kept her faith in God and she lived a consistent life. She lived a believable life. She lived a righteous life that made her, her witness effective and believable. And look at this, she said in verse 3, she said, Would God, my Lord, were with the prophet that is in the land of uh, in Samaria, for he definitely without any shadow of doubt will recover him of his leprosy number one see the solace in her witness the solace in her witness of the comfort and see the tenderness and see the love and see the the sweetness in her witness number two you look at the secret of achievements or the secret because she was living a consistent life a consecrated life a believable life that the mistress could take her word and tell the and tell the husband and Naaman could take that word and go and tell the king on the basis of the word of this little girl they wrote a letter and sent a Naaman to Samaria what if he comes back and is not healed what will happen to her she just a bitch she just sleep there. She just a servant there. She could have thought of that, but she had such great conviction in the God of Israel. She was there in, in the foreign land, and yet she had this confidence. That's the secret of her effectiveness. And when you know your God, the people that know their God, they will do exploits. And they will be strong. And you today, you are becoming strong in Jesus' name. And then the success and the stretch of her effectiveness, the stretch of her effective. Look at the influence of this little girl. Number one, she influenced Naaman's wife. Number two, Naaman's wife influenced her husband, Naaman. Number three, Naaman himself influenced the king of the land. Number four, the king himself influenced many servants to travel with Naaman. Number five, it influenced the whole nation that they were writing a letter to follow after Naaman. And then number six, they brought the knowledge of God to the God, to the people of Israel, and then to the people of Syria. Think about that. Just the witness of this little girl. That's why we're saying our daughters will shine. Our daughters will speak out. Our daughters will not be the people you hide behind a curtain somewhere and they say, you are supposed to be seen but not to be heard. We're supposed to see you. The sweetness of your appearance, that's enough. The sweetness of your beauty, that's enough. Uh -uh. That's good, that's good. But you're going to speak out. And when you speak out, you're going to influence many, many people in Jesus' name. Well, you know the story, eventually, uh, Naaman went to Syria. He was cleansed of his leprosy. And he said, on the basis of the word of that little maid, of that little girl, I know there's no God in any other place except in uh, Israel. Boys and girls in our church, you become witnesses in Jesus' name. I'm looking at, uh, I'm looking at uh, Exodus chapter 2, Exodus chapter 2, and here we're reading from verse 5, Exodus chapter 2, we're looking at uh, verse uh, 5, in verse 5 it says, and she and the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself, 
at the river. And Ame and Amedes walked along the riverside. And when she saw the ark among the flags, she sent her maid to fetch it. And when she had opened it, she saw the child. That's Moses. And behold, the babe wept. That's Moses. And she had compassion on him and said, This is one of the Hebrews children and then said his sister as Miriam to Pharaoh's daughter uh, stop there for a moment look up here Moses was born and nobody knew what Moses would become but the children but the parents had faith in God they saw him to be a proper child this one will deliver our nature our nation that little baby in your family who knows that little baby will grow up will become a doctor will become an engineer will become a deliverer, will become somebody that will affect the whole nation. And when they could not keep that a baby Moses, they put that baby on by the side of the sea, of the, of the river Nile, in a basket. You know the story. And Miriam, just a girl, just a girl. Don't underestimate what girls can do, what the voice of the girls can do, what their faith could do. The father could not be there, and the mother could not be there. There are things daughters can can do that mommy cannot do. There are things sons can do that uh, their parents may not be able to do. And then she was there. That lady was wise, a young girl. And that uh, lady, she was vigilant. And when uh, Pharaoh's daughter got there and saw that thing, uh, Miriam was watching, sent one of the maidens go and carry that thing. And they opened it, and baby Moses was inside that little chest there. And she cried out. And uh, Miriam was all ears. And then she said this is one of the uh, sons of these Hebrews that they threw here and immediately Miriam came out prompt at the right time you will not be late I said you'll not be late. What the Lord has created you for at such a time like this at such an hour like this you will not be late in Jesus name see the wisdom of this girl can i go and call the nurse not can i go and call my mother uh -uh. can i go and call his uh, his mother uh -uh. can i go and call a woman a, a woman that will not see for you and that's exactly the plan and he said yes and and the, this uh, woman lady that is the daughter of uh, pharaoh did not think oh you see that uh, you know the, uh, the 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 mother this uh, woman has milk to feed uh, this child did not even think of that that's how moses came back home all these uh, moses that have gone our daughters will bring them back home and then the mother nursed him, and then by the age of 40, they released him. But what they planted in him never stopped. That's why in later life, God rewarded Miriam. Look at uh, Micah chapter 6. Micah chapter 6. Whatever you are today, whatever your hand finds to do it with all your strength and with all your might, it will use you in Jesus' name. I'm looking at Micah chapter 6, and I'm reading here from verse 3. Micah chapter 6, verse 3. Oh, my people, what have I done unto thee? And wherein have I wearied thee? Testify against me. I for, in verse 4, for I brought thee out I brought thee up out of the land of Egypt and redeemed thee of the house of uh, the servants and I said before thee tell me Moses tell me Aaron tell me the rest and Miriam God said I made her one of the leaders our daughters will become leaders leaders in the nation leaders in the church leaders in the kingdom and you daughters, as well as your sons, you will do exploits in Jesus' name. Actually, the promise of the Holy Ghost is for sons and daughters. The promise of the Holy Ghost is for uh, young ladies and everyone. And you'll have your share of the blessing of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. Acts of the Apostles chapter 2. Acts of the Apostles chapter 2. And I'm reading here from verse 16. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel that it shall come to pass in the last days that God uh, says God I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and tell me the rest your daughters shall prophesy don't muscle their mouth don't close them up your sons and your daughters shall prophesy 
and your, your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams upon my servants and on my hand. Ladies, those are ladies, those are girls, those are daughters. I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy the impute of young maidens in the kingdom. You are a son, you have an impute to make into the progress of the kingdom of God. You are a daughter, you have a, you have a contribution to make to the work of God, and you will do it in Jesus' name. I come to point number three now, and we're looking at the influence of young ministers in the kingdom. The influence of young ministers in the kingdom. Uh, the many uh, young uh, men and women we can refer to, you know some of them, one of them is Joseph. The other one, there's another one, Samuel, another one, Daniel, another one, Jeremiah, another one, Timothy. You'll be like one of them in Jesus' name. And we're looking at, uh, we're looking at Joseph. This is Genesis chapter 41. Genesis chapter 41. You know the story of Joseph very well in chapter 41, verse 38. Chapter 41, verse 38. Here it says, and Pharaoh said, Unto his servants, can we find such a one as this? As this, a man in whom the Spirit of God is. They recognize, we we'll recognize it upon you in Jesus' name. As we look at the life of Joseph, what do we learn? Number one, he was saved. He was saved. Look at what he went through. And yet, there was no bitterness, there was no anger, there was no fighting back, there was no revenge. That young man was saved. He was sanctified, sanctified. He put the best construction on everything that happened to him when all his brothers came and he thought he'll persecute them, he'll punish them, he will imprison them. He said, don't think about that. You are not the one that sent me here. God sent me here before you to preserve life. He was saved. He was sanctified. He was sold to slavery. He was sold to slavery. But he didn't mind that. You don't you know that it was because he went to slavery. That's why the dream he had in his father's land eventually was fulfilled. Whatever they do to you, whatever people do to you, where you get to, that's where the dream will be fulfilled. He was successful. And his, the Lord says that the Lord blessed the house of Potiphar because of Joseph. Number five, he was slandered. He was slandered. He will not commit sin just like you will not commit sin. I said he will not commit sin just like you will not commit sin. And then because of that, he was slandered. And then he was thrown into the prison. But don't misunderstand. Don't misinterpret the word of God. He was in that prison. But it was from that prison he got to the palace. Because there were two servants there, they had their dreams, and then he interpreted the dream for them. And he told one of them that was released, he said, remember me when you are out of this place. And for two years, nothing came, but now Pharaoh had a dream. It was through that person he met in the prison. That's how that person said, I remember my fault today. When we were in the prison, I had a dream like this, and my partner also had a dream like this. And the man interpreted this way, and and that way for him and for me and that is how I was delivered and then the man the Pharaoh said go and call him and they called him and when they called him he interpreted the dream of Pharaoh that's how he came out of that prison and he got to the palace that's how you are going to come out out of the dungeon deliverance has come for you out of the dungeon and your destiny will be fulfilled in Jesus name out of the dungeon you're going to have dominion in Jesus name from the prison from that darkness it got to the place of shining light and the place of promotion and that place of promotion you are going to have in Jesus name don't worry about where you get to don't worry about the persecution don't worry about the things that they do because out of that darkness and out of that dungeon and out of that those things they're doing that's god how god will fulfill all the promises he are giving you and that's how god will fulfill everything he has said about your life and your destiny will be fulfilled and your dream will be realized and the great thing and the good thing the lord has said about you will be done in your life it will be to the benefit of your children 
the benefit of your family and the benefit of your tribe and the benefit of our nation and the benefit of the church of the living God in Jesus name sage thank God I'm sage sanctified thank God I'm sanctified and then he goes he was sold to slavery and then he was successful you'll be successful and it was slandered even though you are slandered you come out of that and you come out of great great things in Jesus name he was subjected to suffering but he remained steadfast steadfast and unmovable because he had this conviction in God he had this conviction and the confidence in God and that conviction and confidence never failed your confidence will not fail your conviction will not fail and that's about Joseph in the influence of young ministers in the kingdom we're looking at first Samuel chapter 2 for Samuel chapter 2 and I'm reading here from verse 12 and this is Samuel now he lived in a dirty environment he lived in a polluted environment he lived in a degraded environment and yet he came out strong and came out pure and came out holy and came out righteous and came out a real man of God whatever your condition may be well this is where they put me and this is where they are hiding me wherever it is they put you wherever it is they are hiding you you are going to come out even to the place of success in Jesus name in 1 Samuel chapter 2 I'm reading from verse 12 1 Samuel chapter 2 verse 12 it says and now the sons of Eli were sons of Belial and then it says and they knew not the Lord that's where Samuel grew up. He grew up in the midst of backsliding people. He grew up in the midst of uh, sinful people. He grew up in the midst of defiled and dirty people. But he wasn't dirty like them, like the white lady that grows around uh, out of the dirty mud. And yet, a clean life. Your life will be clean. A pure life. Your life will be pure. Look at verse 26. And the child Samuel grew on. And he was in favor both with the Lord and also with men. In favor with God and in favor with men. I'm sure you've heard about the story of Samuel, that young child. What we learn about him, number one, he was converted. He was converted. That's what we wish and that's what we desire. That's what we pray for all our youth, for all our boys and girls, all our sons and our daughters converted. He was consecrated to, consecrated, committed to the Lord. He was consistent and then it was incorruptible incorruptible all the dirty environment all the defiled environment couldn't make him dirty couldn't make him compromise and couldn't make him do anything that was evil and God spoke to him and God raised him up a prophet God will raise you up young man God will raise you up and young daughters, God will raise you up. We're spoken about Joseph. We're spoken about Samuel. How about Daniel? We know Daniel. Daniel chapter 1. In Daniel chapter 1, I'm reading here a verse you know very well. And this verse will be true of you. It was true of Daniel. It will be true of you. And look at it. In Daniel chapter 1 verse 8, it says, But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself, that he might not defile himself. We get to school and we see defilement all around. We go to college and we see defilement all around. Where the university will see defilement from the top to the bottom and from the ivory tower to the grassroots. We see defilement there. But you are going there like a Daniel. You get into Babylon, but all those pollutions in Babylon will not affect you in Jesus' name. Because, number one, he was uncompromising, uncompromising. Our young people, they're growing up in the Lord. They're growing up in the righteousness of Christ. They're not going to compromise in Jesus' name. And then they were, uh, Daniel was uncommon, uncommon. He wasn't a person that, like, like every Dick and Harry, he singled himself out. He was unique. Everywhere I go, I'll be unique. I said everywhere I go, I'll be unique. You'll be like that in Jesus' name. And then you see that he was unconquerable. He was unconquerable. They will not conquer your spirit. They will not conquer your soul. They will not conquer your conviction. They will not conquer your heart in Jesus' name. 
Daniel chapter 6, I'm reading from verses 3 and 4. Daniel chapter 6, we're looking at it from verses 3 and 4. Here yeah, it tells us, then this Daniel was preferred above the precedence of the princes because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king thought to search him over the whole realm. And then the presidents and the princes sought to find occasion against this Daniel and concerning the kingdom. But they could find none occasion nor fault for as much as he was faithful. Neither was there any error or fault found in him. It will be, it will be like that with you. We're coming to Jeremiah now. Jeremiah chapter 1. In Jeremiah chapter 1, here was uh, somebody young too, and the Lord spoke to him, and the Lord called him, just like the Lord speaking to our young people today, and the Lord will make you as firm, as fiery, as faithful, as this uh, Jeremiah in Jesus' name. It says in verse, in verse 4, Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Therefore, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. God knows you. And before thou camest forth out of this, out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Then said I, our Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. Not I was, but I am a child. Even at that time, when the Lord was calling uh, Jeremiah, he was still young. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child. For thou shalt go to all that I say, I shall send thee. And whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Are you there? I said, Are you there? And as you go to do what the Lord has called you to do, you will succeed in Jesus' name. You are going to school, you are going to succeed there. Going to college, you are going to succeed there. Now on your way to university, you are going to succeed there. You are going for your service, you are going to succeed there. You come out and you are holding a job, you are going to succeed there. And of course, you are going to have a great impact on this church. And you are going to have a great ministry in this church in Jesus' name. Look at verse 17. Now, therefore, get up thy lawyers arise and speak unto them all that I command thee be not dismayed at their faces lest I confound thee before them for behold I have made thee this day everybody shout this day, this day. I have made thee tell me this day a defense city he will defend you and an iron pillar you'll be like an iron pillar and brazen walls against the whole land, and against the kings of Judah, and against the princes thereof, and against the priests thereof, and against the people of the land. They shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee. Anywhere you go, you are the one that will win the victory. They shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee. For I am with thee. Are you there? I am with thee. Yeah. I said, are you there? Yeah. He will never leave you. Yeah. He will never forsake you. Yeah. I am with thee, says the Lord to deliver you. He will deliver you. Yeah. And everything he has written down in heaven that you will accomplish, you will accomplish them in Jesus' name. Yeah. Chapter 15 of Jeremiah, verse 21. And I will deliver thee out of the hand of the wicked. And I will redeem thee out of the hand of the terrible. I'm going to allow you to open that now. Mark it in your Bible. Take this home with you today. And take it to school when you go tomorrow. And take it to college. Take it to university. And take it to the class. And take it everywhere you go. Because there's a fence around you. There are walls of fire around you. Anywhere you go, and we papas and mamas, mothers and fathers, you go to your office. Anywhere you go this week, I will deliver you. Yeah. Out of the hand of the wicked. And I will redeem thee out of the hand of the terrible. And the Lord himself, who has given all these promises, he'll never leave you, he'll never forsake you. It's time to arise and succeed. 
It's time to arise her courage. Remember, we're coming from the time of David. And that was David that had all those talents and all those qualities. And the Lord raised him up. And he is gone. And this is your own time. I said, this is your own time. You want to rise up and tell the Lord, Oh Lord, I'll be an achiever. Oh Lord, I'll be an achiever. What you have created me for, I will accomplish. I will achieve. I'm not going to bend. I'm not going to bow. I'm not going to go back. I'm not going to look back. I'm going to be an achiever. He'll make you an achiever. Young people, stand up. Young people, stand up. Brothers and sisters, stand up. And say, Lord, this is a glorious day. And this is a glorious time. This is my time. Yes, it's your time. Yes, it's your time. They've served their own generation and they're gone. You are here now to serve your own generation. You will not just go through life like a bird flying over and flying in the air, not making a mark. You will make a mark. You have an impact. You have an impute. You have an influence over the community. You have a great influence even in the church of the living God. Are you saved? Yes. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Are you saved? Whosoever. Whosoever. A boy, a girl, a man, a woman, a papa, a mother, anyone. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. You can call. You can call. You can call on the name of the Lord. Saved, sanctified, spirit filled, soul winning, serviceable, and serving the church of the living God. Tell the Lord, I'm available. Converted, consecrated, committed to the Lord, consistent and confident in the Lord. Nothing drives you back. Nothing discourages you. Nothing intimidates you. Nothing frightens you. Rest up for a purpose. Rest up for a time like this. The grace of God is sufficient for you anywhere you are, anywhere you go, any Goliath confronting you. The grace of God is there. As the Spirit of God is poured upon, the young men, so the Spirit of God is also poured upon the young women. Is with you when it saves a child. He abides with that child. When he saves anyone, he abides with that one. And he says, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. So you may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. Of whom shall I be afraid? It's your savior. It's your shepherd. It's your security. He'll go through life with you. He'll go through life with you. He will go through life with you. Succeeding, you will succeed. All those causes of Goliath are cancelled. All the occultic utterances of Goliath, they're cancelled, taken away from your life.
Move on. And tell anyone, I come. I come in the name of the Lord. And I will prevail. In Jesus' name we pray. That's an amen in your life. That's an hallelujah in your life. There is joy in your life. And there is victory in your life. This day will mark a new beginning in your life. A new era in your life. This is the beginning of another level in your life. Who am I talking about there? Blessing coming upon your life. Showers. Showers of blessing. Victory. Un untold victory. A kind of victory you have never known is beginning today. Raise up that hand and receive everything the Lord has for you today. Forget mystery. Forget sorrow, forget tears, forget defeat, forget falling. A new day has now come. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name. We thank you because before we were born, you knew us. Before we came here today, you knew us. And before we grew up to this level, you knew us. Every boy here, every girl here, every young man here, every young woman here, every student here, you know everyone, one by one. And Lord, I pray that good thing you have thought about from all eternity concerning everyone. Today, be the day of fulfillment in Jesus' name. <laughs> Satan will not stop your plan for any life. Evil spirits will not stop your plan for any lie. Sickness will not stop your plan for any lie. And all the causes of the enemy will not stop your uh, plan for any lie. Lord, I pray all the negative things are cancelled. Sickness, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. All those attacks and all those afflictions, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. My son, there I pray for you. My daughter, there I pray for you. Anything hindering the progress of your life is cancelled today in Jesus' name. And all the defeats you had in the past, all that is temporary, all that is forever gone. Your day of victory has now come. Your day of success has now come. All the resources you need to get to the mountain top where God has ordained and destined you. All those resources will come to you in Jesus' name. Receive your salvation. Receive your security. Receive your sanctification. Receive the protection. Receive the provision of the Lord. And receive the fulfillment of the destiny in your life in Jesus' name. God helped David. He helped Samuel. He helped that little maid. He helped Miriam. He helped Jeremiah. He helped Timothy. You are the man of the hour. You are the daughter of this hour. All the help that came to them will flow to your life right now in Jesus' name. He will, he will send sponsors your way. He will send helpers your way. All the things you have been wondering, how will I have this? How will I have this? How will I have that? Receive that provision now in Jesus' name. All our brothers and sisters in the service today will welcome you to this service. It's a service of lives turning around. I pray that it will turn your life around. It will turn your destiny around. 
and whatever your age may be he called Moses at the age of 80 and he was still successful no matter where you are today everything you are created for will be done will be accomplished in Jesus name he called Saul out of the past of persecution and he made him the greatest apostle I pray that every negative thing in your past will be blotted out and a new life will begin today and you will achieve something something heaven will write about something singers will sing about something writers will write about and I pray that your life will be a life of influence a life of power a life of impact from this day from the inside you will know that you are different go back to where you came from and go and make a mark in that place and heaven will write the story of your life a conqueror an overcomer an achiever a warrior a prospered person a protected person and the joy of the Lord will never end in your life brother sister son daughter go and succeed confirm it in every life Lord in Jesus name I pray